Roman here from the Chess Video Guy channel. Uh, I'm going to look at a fairly complicated and theoretical rook endgame. This endgame happened in one of my games and uh, I analyzed it uh, a long time ago, about 10 years ago, and uh, since then the computer engines and different other software tools uh, for chess have improved and um, I'm gonna show here how to use some of them. In particular, I will focus on just using the chess engine um, and a table-based tool called Final Gen. So this is my rook endgame. Here it's black's turn and the pawn here on a7 is attacked. And black has to make a decision whether he should hold on to this pawn, which comes at a price because then the white king would get activated and the black king would become very misplaced. Or should black allow the pawn to be captured and go with king e4? In the game, uh, my opponent played king to e4, uh, supporting the d-pawn. And of course, to decide if this is a good move or a bad move, we have to understand whether the rook endgame after white captures on a7 is lost or drawn. And that is not very easy to do. Um, because white has two passed pawns, they're going to be running up the board pretty soon. They seem dangerous. Black has only one passed pawn. The typical strategy for white here is to give up that rook for the d-pawn and advance his pawns as soon as possible, and one of them with queen at least. So, we really can't tell for sure if this is a draw or, um, or white's winning here. Um, a long time ago when I was looking at this, the engines were probably pretty optimistic for white. Now, uh, if I look at the engine output here, it thinks it's roughly equal, well, but black has to play a precise move d4. But is that really going to be a draw for sure, or is it roughly equal, but maybe white's winning? It's really hard to say for sure uh, when just looking at the evaluation, even though 0 0.06 seems pretty definitive. But to know for sure, we have to look at the table basis. And this is a seven-piece table base, which is really hard to access. I think it's only by paid subscription to Aquarium, and even then, uh, I haven't actually tried it. So, online this is not available. At the time when I was analyzing it 10 years ago, they had six-piece table bases, but not seven. Here we need seven, of course. So, here comes a tool called Final Gen. So, I had pre-calculated this um, entire Rook endgame in it, and it knows for sure that this is a draw, if black plays d4. And it also knows that anything else that black plays, white wins. So this is a very definitive uh, answer that it gives. Uh, it sometimes gives uh, things like, comments like, white wins or draw. That doesn't really help. Uh, but just looking at the definitive evaluations, I think we can learn quite a lot from this tool. So... Uh, this also tells me that the move that black played, rook to e8, is not good at all. Uh, because, well, the engine says now plus 2, which again isn't very definitive. Um, but the final gen tells us that rook e8 is losing, because white wins now. So, here, advancing one move forward, I played king to b3. Uh, I wanted to intuitively escape from the check that would come after black plays d4. Um, it turns out that a better way to prevent this check or to minimize its effects was to play rook to d7. So here we start to see a couple of things. That the engine um, is not really telling us for sure if this is winning. It's plus 1 in one case and plus 2 in the other case. Final gen is telling, is telling us for sure that after rook d7, white wins. So, looking at these um, tools, we can kind of see what is happening here in the game. Uh, what mistakes the players are making. We can also see that both players are underestimating um, the idea of putting the rook behind the pawn. So here, uh, if black had played d4, the next move that final gen suggested was to play rook to d8. Um, and had black played 
pawn to d3, then check, check, and rook to d7 would be, uh, I think, winning for white. Um, so, and here, white should have played rook to d7 again with the win, and I didn't see this this time. So, not only both players are making objectively bad moves, they're also clearly misunderstanding the idea of how important it is to put here the rook behind the d-pawn for both sides. Um, so, carrying on a bit further with the analysis, I'll show here, well, Stockfish is very optimistic and it tends to overestimate um, the evaluation. So here it says plus 12. And with the engine we can see that if, if white plays pawn to b7, he wins. Because he just has to give up the rook for the pawn and then the king will advance and, and white's going to win. But I played the move rook to h7. Um, and I'd like to know if this is a mistake or not. And once we do this, then Stockfish starts to kind of get a bit confused and not certain if this is a win or not. So I'm going to go to final gen again. And I'm going to copy the, pos the position and in final gen. Well, apparently here, white's still winning. So what I played apparently was fine. And carrying on to this position, here Stockfish thinks that this is a draw, uh, but going to final gen, going to paste fan, apparently here white's still winning, and just the engine isn't quite catching up with the, with the true evaluation until you take it to the position, and then it sees, oh yes, and king to c4 wins. So while the engine takes time to figure things out and it also gives us misleading you know answers for a while until we wait long enough um, final gen is actually very definitive and it gives you a very clear evaluation of the position white wins not plus two not plus one white wins and of course it took me a long time to regenerate the table basis with final gen uh, because this is what I had done. I pasted the position and then I said start and it took you know maybe 10 hours to generate this entire endgame but if you're analyzing an endgame and you want to know some certain answers to questions at different points in the game this is really helpful. So here a5 was definitively winning and the move I played king to b4 um, well, here it can't tell us the answer, but we can see what happened by helping it a little bit, because these moves are forced. And here the engine thinks it's a, um, it's equal, it's a draw. And if I were to paste, copy the position, Control Shift C and paste that into final gen. So here it knows for certain that there, no matter what white plays, um, there's nothing better than a draw for white. So either king c5 or king to c4 is a draw. And then I play king to c5. Here I can click on it. it takes me to the position. Here black has apparently m at least four ways, to, well, exactly four ways to draw and uh, let's see, and he played one of them um, and I went here, here, here and um, here uh, apparently black still had a draw but it was only it was the only move king to d3 and it's just trying to get the king over to the pawns that was helping out um, so in the game, white played, sorry, black played king to b5, and this is definitely lost because the pawn is going to queen. The king eventually escapes from the checks, and white has a queen. 
with the queen against um, rook white wins we don't need final gen to tell that but just to confirm yes white wins and 30 moves here and, and eventually he won in the game um, so a tool like final gen helps us in analysis of complicated end games and it and by analyzing complex end game of course we shouldn't just look for uh, exact evaluations of this position or that position the very important thing here to is is to um, confirm our assessment of the position such as this one so say it's very important for me to know this is winning or not and apparently it's a draw so that's very useful to know secondly if we follow different mistakes that players make we can learn the patterns and in this game the pattern is definitely that um, both sides needed to put the rook behind the d-pawn for white to you know prevent the pawn from advancing as quickly as it did and for black to support the advance of that pawn um, and there are some other ideas I learned that you know advancing the pawn as quickly as possible is very important here because here in this position the best way to win was to advance the pawn to b7 as soon as possible and the mistake I made a bit later I was also holding back the advance of the pawn and I was here playing king to b4 whereas a5 advancing the pawn as quickly as possible was best even though the engine doesn't initially realize it but once it gets there I think it does still doesn't. So anyway, uh, I hope this is a um, useful piece of information uh, for you, this tool, um, Final Gen. It's available for free on the web, um, on the internet. Um, I don't know if it's open source, but I'm pretty sure it's free. Um, and it will help you greatly in analysis of complicated endgames. One more thing to add, it doesn't just look at uh, positions with seven pieces. It actually can look at much more complicated positions with eight or nine pieces. It um, really starts to fall apart when the, once there is too many pawns. It just takes too long to generate the table bases and uh, it takes too much space on your hard drive. But for seven piece endgames, especially for these practical rook and pawn endgames with two pawns against one, it's very helpful and um, it gives you much clearer answers than the engine. Thank you for watching.